one of the principal criticisms of public money, that, oh, it's a fixed money supply, the economy will grind, grind to a halt and so on, won't be flexible, won't be dynamic. Nonsense. We can uh, lend it as well as spend it. So in that case, we add on these two new money flows. Um, the state lends it to, well, we don't want to lend it to any, any Tom, Dick or Harry, perhaps. We want credit-worthy, what we might call principal borrowers. Um, typically a bank and the bank would the banks could perhaps um, participate in reverse auction the state could say well here's 100 billion new money we're going to lend it to the best bids okay you guys submit your IOUs and we'll choose the best one so it's a nice free market um, way of doing it it has a side effect that wholesale interest rates are set by the market and so on so d don't get um, phased by people saying that our money supply is fixed and uh, inflexible. Th there's other ways of doing it. Um, obviously the state can lend um, zero interest to um, public infrastructure projects as well. I'm just highlighting this because um, it's something I've been discussing with Bill Still who's on the libertarian ticket and he wants some free market answers to uh, meet his critics. Right, here's a, a basic operation. It's how the banks make their profit, among other ways. It's the main way they do it. So, banks have this neat um, way of adding numbers to your loan. You know, you, get, you take out a £100,000 mortgage and you look at it in a few months' time and uh, if you've not been meeting all your payments, it's suddenly 101000 Hmm. Um, conversely, all the people who are making deposits with the bank, they get some interest added to their accounts. Not much these days. And the difference between what's added to loans, what adds to the bank's assets, and what's added to the customer's deposits, which increases the bank's liabilities, that's called the spread and gives the bank a lot of its gross profit. It also, of course, charges fees and all sorts of other little niggly ways of getting money out of you. But basically the interest rate spread is their business model. Uh, the bank, as we've seen, have operating costs, same as everybody else, leaving a net profit. And this net profit is then distributed, some of it to the shareholders, some is retained, and banks, as they go on year after year retaining profits, that increases that shareholder's capital account on the balance sheet. The bank gets more valuable to its shareholders. So here's a schematic of what happens to a balance sheet when the customer pays interest to the bank. Um, here's the balance sheet before assets. Remember that that's all the loans and so on. Um, liabilities, all the customer's deposits. Here's, here's a customer with some money in the bank. Uh, unfortunately, the bank is now demanding that money <laughs> from him as interest, and he pays it. What happens to the balance sheet? Well, the assets stay the same, all the loans. That money didn't get added to his loan, it was actually paid by him. Um, where does it go? Well, schematically, it ends up in the shareholder's capital account here, which grows by that amount. Other liabilities stay the same. Um, Obviously, it goes through in, in formal real-world accounting. It will go through the profit and loss account. But profit and loss accounts are regularly reconciled into the balance sheet. Um, so we can say schematically that this charge on the customer, the interest, is uh, ending up to a first approximation as a shareholder's capital. And remember, if you wind the bank up, this is perfectly spendable money. Yeah. Conversely, it's just uh, when the bank pays a little bit of interest to a customer, well, here's the shareholder's capital account and it shrinks and the customers get some new money. That's a liability to the bank. So it's just the opposite of the previous slide. Um, there's the gross interest charged on loan. There's the interest paid back to depositors. The difference is the gross profit which uh, it's sort of a bit 
skew that it accumulates on the liability side of the bank's balance sheet, but that, all that means is that the shareholders have dibs on it, should the bank be wound up. OK, I'll switch tack now to the basic structure of the UK banking system, which is a two-tier system. There's a bunch of banks, High Street Banks, Lloyds, HSBC and Barclays, etc., and the customers interface with those commercial banks. We deposit our money there and we take loans from them. Each of those banks has its own reserve account at the Bank of England, the central bank. As we'll see, the numbers here that the banks have on their asset side have different qualities to the numbers here, the ones we get to use, our renter currency. We can't get our hands on the stuff there, unfortunately, although we own it the bank. So here's a schematic of the two-tier money system. Here's us out here in the economy using what are called broad money numbers. Those ones that have been lent into existence, they're just called broad money. There's a lot more of them than what's uh, called the base money, which circulates between the banks. Um, goes from one reserve account to another within the computers at the Bank of England. So um, Interesting points. The causality goes that way. We do all our business, run our economy, and then at the end of each day, behind the scenes, the banks do interbank settlement using these base money numbers. And very interestingly, there's no crossover between, there's no direct crossover between the circulation of these base money numbers between the banks themselves and the circulation of the broad money numbers which you and I get to use. Um, that curtain puts a barrier between them. There are ways, there are conduits between the two. Um, um, technically you can buy and sell gilts here and you can buy and sell gilts here um, and you, you can, the banks can order physical cash here and we can get hold of physical cash but as regards the electronic uh, money that's more or less all of our medium of exchange. These two circulations are disjoint, they don't cross over. Mike Black is going to explain this more fully this afternoon, or later this morning, later anyway. So, here's the overall picture. There's the money numbers that we use. Um, they come in and out of circulation as loans are taken out and repaid. Ambiguity, are they money or credit? Well, you can always have a good argument about that. Um, to all intents and purposes, they're money. And they circulate with great complexity as we do our business. And then, um, basically, at the end of each business day, the huge number of money transfers of this sort of broad money is settled by net transfers of this sort of base money. Um, as I said, there's far fewer of these um, base money numbers. They're internal to the banking system. And crucially, they're issued debt-free by the Bank of England. It's been doing quite a lot of that lately with quantitative easing. Um, the, the more money numbers you have in this part of the system, the, the more easily the banks can settle their differences at the end of each day because um, they don't always actually transfer the numbers to each other. Sometimes they have to lend them to each other and of course then you've got to trust that the bank you're lending to is going to pay you back and if, if they look a bit shaky you're a bit more reluctant to lend to them. So it's quite complicated what goes on here, the inner workings of the system. I like to think of it like this. Because of the disconnect between the two circle circulations, we're, we're almost moving to a, a system where we, we the people, the users, get to use these funny money numbers and the guys running the system are settling up between themselves at the end of each business day using these other numbers. And there's getting to be such a disconnect between them, they might as well be using smarties to settle up. Because their game is to make a very good living by making the rest of us use their funny money numbers. 
And we gradually, since the Second World War, we've moved incrementally into this, um, what's now a scam. Um, I think I'll leave it there then and take questions. <laughs>